kind of ties into your earlier point about name and likeness is an understanding of this. You know, most contracts with bigger brands are going to want to use, especially the player, the streamer, the gamer, their likeness for as long as they want. So if they're doing a campaign and you're holding a Mountain Dew can drinking it, Mountain Dew wants to use that ad of the gamer drinking it for as long as they want on digital and print and, you know, however they want to do it. And, you know, as a brand, that you have to think about yourself as a, you know, a streamer or a gamer is, you want a flexibility to maybe go to, you know, Pepsi or Sprite or something else that's not part of it. And if there are all these images of you drinking Mountain Dew, it's going to be really hard for Coke or Sprite to do a deal with you. So you have to kind of be aware of how your name and likeness is used when your deal is over. That's a really big point and something that, you know, many people in the industry now, especially that work with talent, are taking notice of how long these rights exist for. You know, yeah, you can use my name for as long as you're paying me, but what happens when you're no longer paying me? Why should you be able to keep running the same ad with me? If you want to keep doing it, you should keep paying me. You know, so it's all about the negotiation of the deal of how these things work. For sure. And, you know, I know you have a list of services that you provide, Justin. I wanted to uh, let you do a brief spill on, like, uh, like the, the player and team contracts, man, because, you know, I, I think before, you know, uh, you mentioned, um, you know, the, the different corporations and, and, you know, we talk about the photo likeness and the, and the imagery, but I think more, most important after those are the player and team contracts when you kind of get into, okay, I'm, I'm signing with a team. Uh, I got to make sure that I'm protected. I know this is probably going to be a big payday, but what what are some of the things that you should look out for as a player? Well, yeah, so I mean most players, especially if you're signed to, you know, a bigger organization, one of these tier ones, you're going to be signing a pretty extensive player contract, you know, if you're in the Call of Duty League or Overwatch or Overwatch Contenders, you might be signing, you know, a 30 to 40 page agreement. You know, if you're doing CSGO or Fortnite or Call, you know, just regular other games that's not part of these franchise leagues, you might be looking at a 20 to 25 page agreement. It all really kind of depends on the level of the team. And a big thing is to really look at the money. That's obviously one big thing is how much they're paying you and kind of what your bios are especially if you're signing with a team that's maybe not at the top of their game and you're looking, okay, I'm going to start here, hopefully build, so I can go from a contender's team to, you know, a pro Overwatch League team. Or I could, you know, work my way up from a team that's just doing well in CSGO to one of the major organizations that's paying very well. So I think it's important when you're negotiating a deal to be aware of what your buyout clause is and then also kind of what your streaming hours are, what your requirements are under the deal, how, how many X hours you're supposed to do, what kind of independent sponsors you're allowed to have. That's also really important in how that's structured. Does the team get a cut of anything they bring in or a cut of anything you get or is it you know some middle ground or are you totally not allowed to get independent ones or can you not get independent ones that don't compete with us or that don't compete with us and aren't in certain areas that we might expand into? You know, so there's lots of different things that you have to be aware of in these agreements for you to understand how you can proceed in your career. Because, yeah, they may have, you know, a keyboard company now, but no headset company. But they're probably going to want to get a headset company. So you might not be able to get an independent one if they're looking at a different company for that. So these are just a, a few of the things that you just kind of got to be aware of. And with some of these tier one uh, contracts, and and this is just me being curious and asking, because uh, like I said, I look at everything from the basis of like how the music industry is is uh, built. Have you started to see like th- like the three sixty deals yet in esports, or do you even see it coming to that? I mean, I think that you know when you think about a three sixty deal in music, you're saying pretty much whoever's the signing entity, whether it's a label or some entertainment company, is getting a percentage of, like, everything you make in the space. So your mu- your music sales, your publishing, your touring, your merchandise, any TV appearances, just anything that's related to entertainment. So if you think about it as a pro gamer getting signed to these teams, you know, usually the team's getting a percentage of their tournament winnings. But, you know, really other than that, 
it's really just like you're competing and doing your obligations in exchange for a salary. You know, the team may be getting sponsorships, but most players aren't getting a cut of that. You know, it's rare unless mm. you're a pretty big player for you to get a cut of the sponsorship deal. You know, unless unless your image is on it. Like if it's the, you know, the Quicks branded misfit keyboard, then maybe the players whose name and image is on it might get some kind of payment or royalty on it. But if it's just, you know, Misfits or Optic or Immortals, then, you know, they're not going to, the player yeah. themselves isn't going to get it. So it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely a few less different kinds of income streams. Yeah, I, I, and I think you it's know? just, I, I think it's just early in, in, in the space too, Justin, and correct me if I'm wrong, I just, I feel like right now it's, it's not the wild wild west, but it's it's, it's a new frontier where um, everybody's trying to figure it out. Still, even though we're we're at this space where we're we're doing deals like this, do you agree yeah, with I that? Mean, you know, you're, yeah. I mean, I definitely think that you know people think it's the wild wild west. It's like no, nah, I think it's got settling in a little bit. I definitely still think there's some outliers and people that really aren't operating properly and you know being able to slip a little bit through the cracks. But for the most part, especially as you get up to, you know, the top level where you have these companies getting, you know, twenty, thirty, fifty million dollar investments from, you know, reputable entrepreneurs and, you know, sports owners and such, that's kind of weeded out. You know, once you get to the top level, the real people that are making the big deals, it's starting to get a bit more formalized. Yeah, for sure. And and I wanted to kind of touch on um you mentioned like earlier uh, the the impact you know that esports has had across seas and and now that North America has has got on board with that, I know one of your services is you know uh, doing the visas and immigration uh, matters and you know if you wanted to talk about that for a while because I know you you know it's it's it's, it's happening where you you're getting players that play across seas that that are signing on to. American own arcs that have to come over and actually play. So if you want to talk about that for a brief moment. Yeah, so I mean, obviously right now there's really any immigration. No one's traveling country to country. But really before the sure. issue, um, this is definitely a big thing. You have, you know, whether you're an Overwatch team bringing over a whole Korean team or a bunch of Europeans or really anyone who's a non-U.S. citizen who's coming to you, the U.S. to compete and earn a salary needs a visa. So what's interesting and one of the big things I've been dealing with is because eSports, especially at this level, is so new. You know, you have leagues, even like the Overwatch League is only a few seasons old. The Call of Duty League just started. You know, you have Rainbow Six and PUBG and a bunch of these new games establishing their own leagues. So, you know, when you're trying to submit these applications for visas, you have to really substantiate the level of the talent and the level of the competition that they're kind of competing in. So it's definitely hard to talk about a league that hasn't really existed yet or that it's the first or second season in. There's not like substantial earnings reports and maybe there's not huge marketing deals and, you know, broadcast deals and, you know, a lot of these things are still kind of in the works, but teams need to secure their players to get them, you know, here to practice. And because these visa process takes, you know, several months, if not longer, you need to kind of give yourself lead time. So you may be trying to get a visa six months ahead of when the league starts, and the league may not know if they're going to be using Twitch or YouTube or Mixer. You know, they may not have the $50 million, you know, brand headset deal. You know, some of these things may not be in place. So it's really about trying to figure out other ways to explain to, you know, these examiners, the immigration officers, who really aren't that familiar with the esports space. To be like, oh, yeah, he's going to play in this huge PUBG or Overwatch game, and, you know, he's going to be making this much salary, and these are the kind of owners that are in the league, and these are the kind of sponsors, and, you know, you really have to explain every element of it to them so they can understand it. So that you can get, Got it. so you can hopefully get a visa approved. Got it. Good. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I never thought about it that way, man, but you, you're talking about some detail, detail things to get it approved. That's that's amazing. And <clears throat> lastly, but not least, <clears throat> I know you do wills, trust, and estate matters. Like, 
like what 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 does that look like from a from a professional esports player category or even even a coach or somebody that's in in the industry that are that are big name streamers or what have you what 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 is that conversation like and what 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 does that entail well yeah i mean you know a lot of that is more for the traditional individuals and musicians but you know it's more about like kind of your estate and you know planning and kind of just figuring out your finances and wealth management because, you know, as you grow, you know, whether you're a 2K player earning, you know, 35, 50K for the six-month period or your Call of Duty player getting six figures or a Dota player, you know, walking away with $2 million, you know, you're going to start getting into a different price bracket and a different income range than maybe you were traditionally used to. You know, you're 19, 20 years old. Most kids aren't making six figures you know, traditionally. But now you're a professional gamer signed to a franchise team where the week salary minimum is 50K, you know, you've now changed everything. And, you know, being a 19-year-old, you might not need the 50K the way a 25- or 30-year-old might. So it's being able to understand how you can, you know, find the right people to plan for these things, how you can maybe diversify your investments or you make a little investment. You know, it's good to have money, but just having it sitting in a bank account may not be the best way to, you know, plan for your future. So the estate planning stuff is, you know, God forbid something happens. It's like, you know, you're on a plane crash or you're, you know, in a place that something happens because, you know, let's, you know, for instance, the Madden thing, you know, that was a tragedy. And, like, you know, if that person had made, you know, millions of dollars and, you know, if husband and wife were stay there, their estate might have had it been distributed to their kids. They might have had to you know, a poor legal guardian if they have young kids. You know, so there's a lot of things that might start coming into play as the gaming space continues to grow, as the income grows, and as, you know, more players continue to get older and older and get to the level where they're going to think about estate planning. Okay, like, now I got married and have a kid. I'm a pro gamer. I have to make sure I have a will that in case, God forbid, something happens, you know, my wife and my, you know, is taken care of. You know, maybe I make a big lot of money, and I need to know how to, you know, make a trust fund in my kid's name or something. You know, these might start become new matters that are going to come to play for gamers and people in this space that it might not have been before. That's awesome knowledge, man. And like I said before, man, I, uh, I'm, I thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, man. We have a few minutes left. If you want to just go ahead and tell people how they can reach out, you know, um, social media, website, or what have you, uh, you have time to do so. Well, yeah, so, you know, check me out on Twitter, Justin J E S Q. That's Justin J E S Q. My DMs are open, so, you know, feel free to send me a message. And check out JacobsonFirm.com, J-A-C-O-B-S-O-N, firm. Dot com. We have a bunch of articles there that are definitely useful. So if you want to learn more, check it out. For sure, Justin, man. Like I said, thanks thanks for coming on again. And listening to the audience, please go read his articles. They're, they're detailed. They're knowledgeable. He does great great jobs with those. And if you had any legal help, get with Jack and Jacob. So, man, thanks for coming on again, Justin. Thank you. Have a good one. This was another episode of Go Play Esports with Christopher Turner. Follow him on Twitter at Turner underscore CP. Thanks for having me, bro.